Hello everyone. Uh, today we have a special interview with Osan Isinak and Osan has been very close to our community. He works with international startups and it's a pleasure for us to have him here. Uh, for those that don't know Osan, Osan is an active investor and serial entrepreneur with over 25 years of international experience within mm -hmm. the angel investment, venture capital and private equity sectors. Uh, he was based in Silicon Valley during the uh, first dot-com boom in the uh, 1990s. And then, um, you know, he has been in different cities from San Francisco, Seattle, New York, Toronto. Uh, he's currently president, president of the Keretsu Forum in Canada, the world's largest uh, angel investment network operating in four countries. And the global network specializes in syndication of deals and invest over uh, 100 million into uh, 200 early stage uh, companies each year, which is amazing, Osan. Welcome to this interview. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you for having me, Miriam. Good yeah, to nice to see you. Mm -hmm. uh, so, Osan, the first question is related, of course, with the pandemic and COVID-19. <laughs> kind of this has, uh, you know, hit all type of businesses around the world. And uh, startups in particular are afraid of angel investment is going to go away for the next couple of years. Um, right. So what do you think people should expect in, in regards of angel investors and how angel investors are going to react to post COVID crisis? All right. Uh, uh, it's, I mean, it's, it's actually pretty natural to be a little, uh, little worried or anxious, uh, you know, given that these are, these are, you know, unexpected times. Um, I guess there are a couple of things that you need to look at. Um, uh, there, the, the competitiveness, uh, the, the, the capital markets are very competitive right now. Uh, the biggest issues that we're seeing is that there are, uh, the valuations have been rising over the past five to 10 years. Um, and, and there may be a bit of a correction, specifically on the VC front. Uh, we're seeing that there's certain down rounds that are, that are happening. And you know what a down round is basically, you're, you're raising capital on a valuation that's lower than what you offer to your previous set of investors, which is, uh, which is a very, very uh, negative, it can have a very negative impact uh, on your company and in your future, uh, future funding rounds. That's what we're seeing. Uh, and that's, 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 uh, it could be very, uh, uh, it could be very uh, um, <laughs> unnerving. Uh, you know, you keep your uh, investors happy. Uh, you know, a happy investor is a happy company. A <laughs> uh, happy future round. Um, and and work with the investors. Now, uh, everybody, as an investor, you don't want the company, your portfolio company, to fail. Uh, so you want to support them. Uh, support them in potentially, you know, uh, doubling down on certain rounds, helping them instead of raising fresh new capital from fresh investors at a down round, try to see if you can, you know, circle back to your existing investors and say, hey, you know what, this is, this is where the gap is and we need to fill it. Whether that's a capital gap or whether that's a, uh, you know, a, a networking, business development, product development, etc. You really need to kind of, uh, use every tool in your toolbox at this point, you know, just at least over the next year or so until yeah. things go back. Uh, also, I mean, but that's what, for example, for uh, startups that already have some rounds in investment, what about those that are just starting to raise money? So they shouldn't expect much, I guess. No, 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 no. We're investing. <laughs> we continue to invest. Uh, Miriam, we continue to invest in new companies. Uh, but uh, it, it, it's, we, we, because we found that companies would come to us with uh, unrealistic valuations. Now, you know, this is, this is a moment where uh, at least for the next six months or so uh, it's uh, the, the leverage is with the investor rather than the company. Right. Uh, so you just need to make sure that you have uh, you're prepared and, uh, and, and I've said this before, and I'll say it again, nothing is written in stone. Your investment structure is not written in stone. You can negotiate. You could be creative with your structure. Please don't come to me with a safe instrument, uh, but you could come in with a hybrid. You can come in with something else. Uh, be creative in how you fund your company right now at the beginning and keep a very open mind to this. Uh, we're, we're not here to pound your company into the ground. We're here to help your company scale up. 
<laughs> All right. Uh, That's right. Yeah. Believe it or not, we're in the same boat. <laughs> That's right. Uh, so the next question is regarding, you know, other crises that have happened in the world. Because, you know, for many people, it's like, a, wow, we are in a certain, you know, big uh, health and economic crisis. Uh, but certainly, uh, you know, we have gone through different other crises in the world. And you were part of the, uh, uh, you know, you were in the U.S. during the dot-com. Uh, what happened in that crisis that you think that our lessons learned uh, for right. this crisis in regards of First the status of all, and investment? Thank investors? you so much for aging me, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Miriam. <laughs> I'm 43, so I'm not. <laughs> I'm just joking. Um, so, uh, I mean, you know, you and I, we were just having this discussion. You and I, we come from yeah. emerging markets. Uh, yeah. you're, you're, you, you come from Colombia, I come from Turkey. So, we've seen these types of crises before. Uh, you know, when, when, when the economy just kind of hits a wall. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's something similar. Now, that I'll, 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 with regards to what happened, I was in San Francisco, actually, during the first dot-com boom. Um, there's a, there is, it's the same but different. Now, uh, what happened back then, we all knew that there was a bubble going on. We all really knew that there was something not, you know, not a little bit of surreal times coming around just valuations was unbelievable uh people just thought that it would just go up forever and ever and ever now the economy would go up for uh that happened very quickly that the, the environment changed within a week to a month it was a different world uh so it was a very quick train wreck uh and you just kind of had to adjust the problem here that we're seeing, that I'm seeing at least, not just with the overall economy, but with these companies, is that this is more of a slow motion train wreck because there's so many subsidies coming down uh, that I'm afraid that not all of them are being put to good use on the company level. And, and that could have a longer term effect because these subsidies come with strings attached. So... Uh, we have to be very, very careful how we tread here. Uh, that, that this isn't, we don't turn this into a train wreck, especially a slow motion one. Uh, and that we, 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 uh, we make sure that our companies are, uh, are, are positioned to move forward uh, on the longer term when this is all said and done, because this is going to be over. I mean, apparently the vaccines are coming. Let's say, let's uh, see, um, they come in uh, in April, June, towards the end of 2021, we should be all good. Now, that's when we start to think about what's happening here. We could have a roar back in economy, but everything's under debt. So we have the debt problem, right? We, that's the slow motion train wreck that I'm talking about. So we could end up with a much, much bigger recession in our hand uh, when, all, when all this is said and done. And as a company, especially as a startup company, startups are never going away. We're going to have startups. We're going to have innovation. We have to innovate. We can't sit still. That's not, there's no, we're going to continue to invest. That's not going to stop. It's just how we maneuver through that process and how we brace ourselves. Uh, uh, and we just don't want to panic. If you panic, you're going to make weird decisions. That's, that's true. What we just over and over again. Yeah, and that's true. Feel, uh, a downturn. Yeah, and that, that was one of the things that, uh, you know, I, I've been afraid this year because many people are saying like, oh, the recession is now. I see the recession coming after. <laughs> no, not necessarily <laughs> now, but it, it depends. It's on a part. cycle. Uh -huh. Yeah. Right? Cycles happen. You, can't, yeah. you cannot stop that cycle. That's true. That's true. Uh, so in, in regards of in having this uh, same scenario, oh, what type of startups are you looking for right now? Uh, so <laughs> talking about we are in the middle of pandemic, you know, post pandemic, what type of startups is an angel investor looking at this point? Uh, so that's the other thing that we've noticed is that there's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of investment that's, uh, that are, that, that are being made into non-traditional type of companies. So company, the investors, uh, on the angel level, uh, who are always, tech are starting to invest in life sciences and life sciences are invest. So there's a shift in different uh, sectors, but once again, you know, this is, you know, this, this, it's forcing certain sectors to really kind of evolve uh, as we can see from zoom online education, fraud in online education, 
we are seeing all sorts of different interesting like companies that are trying to prevent things like that. Uh, those, I think, those types of companies will they're, they're here to stay. They, they it's they're, it's their time. Mm-hmm. Um, but really, uh, the whole remote work environment now i think we've already kind of we've gone over the hoop the, 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 everybody's kind of invested in that already uh so we're going to once again when you see this type of mad rush into these types of investments you see a consolidation play at the end uh and that's what we'll probably see towards you know um, q2 q3 of uh 2021 Mm-hmm. Uh, a consolidation play on all the different video conference platforms and all of that stuff. Honestly, we're, we're looking at everything. We, we want to continue to do about 30, 35% uh, into life sciences. Mm-hmm. Um, it's uh, not just always pharma, but, you know, medical device, uh, things like that. And they, 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 we believe will continue to, you know, receive good investment, um, education, um, digital education, is another good one, a uh, good sector. Uh, I mean, it's just, it's just really kind of, we just don't know. We play it by the ear. There's a lot of space technologies that were coming by. Now they're kind of idle. Yeah. In, in your case, you have a, a pool of investors. So you, I imagine that you have in different exper- experts in different sectors. So you will yes. be evaluate them uh, as per the different experts that you have, right? Right. So one of the advantages that we have is that we have a global perspective mm-hmm. um, and and we see what types of companies float to the top. We see what types of companies are getting more traction. Um, more importantly, because we have a pretty good deep network of investors as well, we see what types of investors are going or leading which types of companies. This allows us to kind of piggyback on some of the existing investors on their expertise. I mean, I say 35% life sciences. I have an economics background mm-hmm. with an MBA in finance. Uh, what do I know about life sciences? But I do know the people that are putting their money in to some of these companies. I could, you know, follow on and say, hey, you know what? Here's here's a little bit of money on uh, uh, from me. Of course. Right? That's, how, that's how we're doing it. It's important right now, especially right now, to keep, a global perspective mm-hmm. um, it's it, because your competition is not just North America anymore and I've said this over and over again as well you really need to look at you know your competitors in Asia mm-hmm. uh, in Latin America in, in Europe in you know all across and it's not just Silicon Valley in Chicago New York anymore it's or, or Toronto nonetheless we have become a bit of a tech, tech hub here as well um, but it's it's a global play uh, and you really need to look at that and that's exactly what we're seeing and some of the companies that are coming in for uh to to present and they have investors from vietnam hong kong uh you know uh uk etc and this is something that we really need to to wake up to yeah i think it's extremely important especially in an ecosystem like the canadian ecosystem that is uh tend to be a little bit conservative in regards of uh, you know the type of investors or mm-hmm. startups they they can have uh but i think it's uh learning in the process i, I i've seen more uh diversified portfolios at least in, in the last few right, years right. um so your organization uh helps international startups same as our organization uh, both are a part of the startup visa program. Uh, you and the angel investment uh, part, we are in more incubation and acceleration process. Um, so how do you see the perspective of international startups coming to Canada uh, in the next year or so? Is this a good time for them to come here? Uh, how are you guys planning to help to uh, establish companies here in, in Canada to become right. global? Uh, so we're very active in the startup visa program, um, just because it's, it fits our mandate. We have a very global perspective, and a startup visa is a very global uh, initiative. So uh, it, we haven't really changed how we do things to, mm-hmm. to engage with the startups from around the world. So it, it, we like it. We enjoy it. I think there's a lot of opportunity. Um, Canada's always been, I mean, first of all, let me take one step back. Startup visa program is uh, is a program by the Canadian government. So it is, I mean, we all know that Canada has and hopefully cont- will continue to be a safe haven 
uh, a safe haven for not only just businesses, but also with families. We all know it's for families. We just need to communicate to the world that it is for businesses because you know uh, mm -hmm. that you know when businesses don't wake up in the morning and figure out what's happening, just ask themselves, I wonder how Canada is. So this is a smaller market and you're right, it is a, it's a stereotypical, I guess, if you want to uh, a conservative market. Uh, so when you come into Canada, um, you have to have that mind frame, a global mindset. That you're not accessing the Canadian market, you're accessing a North American market, one, and then afterwards you're accessing the global market in a safe haven where you can actually, your, 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 your family, your kids, et cetera, can go to good schools, et cetera, et cetera, all that stuff that comes with the startup visa program. Um, but you still need to keep a global perspective. Um, and, you know, investors in Canada are not, you know, throwing money around, right? Uh, we're not, uh, <laughs> uh, we're not, you know, freewheeling money or anything like that. It's a tough place to do business, Canada. Uh, but if you have a global perspective, uh, it can be a very good launching pad uh, because we do have the resources and those resources are, believe it or not, are not as expensive as, uh, as, as you would see in the Valley or New York or wherever else. Uh, so really, and, and there's a connection, you know, there's a, there's a very multi a multicultural connection here. Uh, so it really kind of, you just need to leverage that. Uh, and, and before you come into Canada, you really need to leverage the network. I mean, it's, it's the same thing with anywhere around the world. If you, if I want, if I wanted to move to, uh, uh, you know, relocate to Hong Kong, I really need to have a good network in Hong Kong, right? Uh, awesome. Or to Paris or whatever. If you're going to relocate to Toronto, make sure that you have the right network. Uh, and that's something that, you know, your organization, LADAM, and us with Pretsu, um, you know, we, we help with that. And that's yeah. the key to building that business. Yeah, and you have seen a lot of businesses. Uh, when, when somebody comes here uh, with a business from outside and they have like a um, good business to establish here in Canada, why do you think some startups really fail into make the move in Canada? what they need to know to don't go into that path. Because I've seen some in, in our community, we have seen some businesses that, you know, it, it struggle to actually get into the right path. Mm -hmm. Well, the, the other thing is that not every market is made the same, uh, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, an example they used to teach us way back in school uh, is just, you know, McDonald's. It had McDonald's has different burgers in different countries, but mm -hmm. it's still a burger. Uh, all right. <laughs> so, uh, uh, and that's what it is. You need to make sure that your business model fits, first of all, the Canadian marketplace. Because if you're a B2B, for example, the banks in Canada, the MasterCards of Canada, uh, payment systems of Canada, although they are payment systems, they have their own nuances because they have their own regulatory uh, you know, uh, bodies that they have to adjust to. So you have to know and get to know that. And it, it's through our network, your network, my network, and that's how we kind of hold them by the hand and show them, you know what, your product, although it can be brilliant in Colombia, you need to do a little bit of tweaks here and there, and this is how we do it over here, and boom, the MasterCard client that you have in Colombia now is the client over here, mm -hmm. uh, right? It's There are nuances. This isn't a copy-paste of your business model, and it. It, it takes a little time to get to know that, it, you know, you speak to your investors, you speak to the local investors, you just get to know them um, and keep an open mind with, remember, your deal structure, your, your offering, um, and, and you, you can make it. First, you make it over here, then you, you know, jump into the U.S., et cetera, et cetera. Thank you for saying that because we repeat that every single day, I think, to our <laughs> startups. Because sometimes they feel like, oh, there are other people that are advancing faster, you know, especially the locals. But of course, the locals know the local market, you know. Yeah. Um, yeah, and, you know, Canada is not an easy place to do business. It, mm -hmm. it really, it, people think that it's really easy to do business, but it's very, very difficult to break that network. Uh, to break into those circles. It's not an easy place uh, to to uh, the, the Canadian dream is tough, right? <laughs> it's not easy and, and a lot of people can attest to that. That's true and more than that, you know, is that uh, I don't believe any startup are coming here just because of the Canadian market size, you know, <laughs> they, they come here for what you said before, it's a, it's a good place to grow your business in global markets, it's like 
you know. And exactly, it's just general. What we're seeing is it's driven by uh, by uh, you know family first, and then let's see how our business does. And these people are really brilliant, really smart, really intelligent, really successful. Uh, so it's a program if applied uh, in the right fashion can really benefit Canada. Um, it, it really can, um, and it, and it's it's in our interest to uh, uh, create depth in our economy in terms of creating net new verticals, diversifying from the natural resources and the traditional thing. You really need, and this is an opportunity for us to bring in really interesting companies that can actually expand our ecosystem. And I don't like that, use the word, use that word, but it's really, you know, that's what we really need to do here. Really diversify, 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 and get that depth so that it's where we, we can, you know, we can, we can have a say in the world. That's true. And now the last question, because, uh, you know, this is a short interview is for uh, this um, last event of the year is what is your biggest takeaways from this year? And what will be the main recommendation for uh, startups and investors that are facing right now the crisis for 2021? What, yeah, uh, what will be that recommendation for them? Yeah. I mean, okay. So uh, I guess the learning curve over here for a lot of people were, you know, just these, uh, and, and for us, we've been through this before, uh, you know, um, crisis, they come and go uh, and they will come again uh, in a different form. This, form happened to be a virus. Uh, next form will probably be debt. Uh, right? Uh, so we, we, these things come, but the effects are relatively, you know, the same uh, economic effects. Of course, this particular one actually has uh, health effects, but uh, uh, it will have, uh, you know, we, we just need to learn from them. We just need to kind of brace ourselves, make sure that we're positioned well. Uh, we're positioned for the future. Um, the one thing you don't want to do is freeze up and panic. Uh, you really need to go back to your existing investors or, you know, talk to your existing network and say, you know what? Okay, here we are. Uh, you know, we, we, we tried to plan, but here we are. How, what's our next step? They really methodically move up, but quickly, methodically. Uh, and that's something that we should brace ourselves for the next year as well. And just really figure out how we can grow, figure, be innovative. Uh, you know, if you could, if you can't sell the way you can sell right now, how do you sell a different way? Uh, you know, how do you create a different, how do you test your products in a different fashion? Um, look at us, instead of doing this live, we're doing this on Zoom, different, right? It's uh, these little things that actually do work out. So keep an open mind and just, you know, the world keeps on turning. That's right. And uh, keep a positive attitude because, I mean, if we all have to pass through this. <laughs> Sometimes I have to uh, remind myself I'm not the only one in this crisis, right? Everybody it is. Yeah. Absolutely. So, we're, we're in this together. Yeah, we are all in this together. So thank you so much, Osan, for this lovely interview, um, for your words and, and experience in the investment sector here in Canada. And hopefully we'll see more international startups coming next year to Canada okay. and, of course, uh, trying the market and trying to reach global markets. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Marina.